Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Well, today I'm going to show you guys and explain to you what is the problem with the rattling noise that some Ford F-150 owners have. Well, let me show you. Let me start mine and we'll go from there. Show you how there is no rattling noise on mine. So it's not every owner has that issue. It's some engines, some owners, and I will explain to you why and what is the problem that Ford dropped the ball. So let me start you start the engine, show you and go from there. It's on a cold start, hasn't been started in 24 hours. Temperature outside is probably around 50, 40 or so. And let's go. As you can see, no issues. You know, air engine is running normal, there is some ticking noise. Slight ticking noise from injectors is normal, but not like a typewriter or anything like that. So what you're looking at the screen is, is not a problem. It's a normal part of the valve train on the top of the engine on most of the modern engines actually that have it. Most of it, some still go and use the old technology. Let me show you something and I will go into details. You see what this is? You see the difference in size? Those are brand new parts from Ford. And you can verify uh, if you want to. Here's a part number for bigger one and from the smaller one. The rattling noise goes back to the history. Actually, it goes back to the earlier, uh, early versions of 5.4. Let me show you the TSB that for created. You can read it. You can search it for it. It's on a screen. And the solution to fix this rattling, as you can, you know what I mean, you will see on the screen, the Ford has uh, provided is to, there is multiple things that could have been done. Oil, make sure it meets the specifications, um, API, oil filter, make sure it's not restrictive, meets the specifications, it's a quality filter. And the last thing the Ford said is the lash adjuster would have been would have to be replaced if any of those things did not fix the issue then the last lash adjuster would have been some owners some owners complained to me they had their issue and i told them on five fours actually switch to synthetic oil they switched a month later you know what i mean there is some people that would when you ask them to let me know if that helped they did help tell me this guy came back a month later. I didn't think he would. He said, yeah, you know, and a lot of people say, yeah, I will do it. They never do. But this guy was a nice, honest person. He switched the oil to, to synthetic oil. I don't remember what brand. I know it was on 5.4. He had the issue, and he just like looking for an answer. Uh, when he switched, that issue disappeared. You're going to say oil makes a difference? Well, every oil, even though it, had, it meets the specifications, it has different specs because the specifications for the oil have different numbers. Let me show you what I mean. And before I show you, let me share some more details. It's like saying every V8 agent, Ford V8, Chevy V8, Toyota V8, Nissan V8, they're all the same. It's a V8. They all have the same horsepower, same specs. They're all problematic. No, they all have their engines because Ford will say that Ford V8 is different than Chevy. It's different from Toyota. Same thing Toyota owner say, same thing Dodge owner, same thing Nissan owner, same thing Chevy owner will say. So here is the thing, just like engines are different, same thing applies to the oil specifications. Let me show you a quick example. I'm not sure how much you can see. Here, full synthetic oil, valve in. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but look at the numbers. There is a standard column and there is a, the actual numbers for valve in. TBN. 8.8 or 8.39 I'll give you a quick look and then if you look at uh, for this was out Valvoline let's take a look at mobile look at the numbers for mobile they're different numbers and I'm not sure if you can see on the screen or not with my video if not I will take a screenshot and we'll add to this video numbers completely different look at the TBN for for mobile and Valvoline, 8.8, 10.4. Look at that for volatility, evaporation, 8.5 for mobile. Well, this is mobile annual protection. This is the most expensive. 
This is the regular full synthetic valve oil. Look at the numbers for volatility. volatility. You have pressure 11.6. Both oils meet API, have that symbol of API, but have different specifications. Keep that in mind. Trying different oils can make a big difference. It's like a V8. Every V8 is different. It works differently. Have the same, they have the same concept. They have pistons and so on. But they work differently. They sound differently. Same thing with motor oil. They provide different levels of protection. They provide a uh, different level of lubrication to the engine and adjust uh, hydraulics, pressures on engine and so on. So what is the problem? So why is it that some owners have this issue? If you look at the TSB, for 5.4, like I already said, and there's a TSB for 5.0 engines, actually. Uh, there is more probably TSBs out there and uh, that that has details because of rattle noise. And this video is based, per, actually not based, per request from one of my subscribers, and I appreciate, you know what I mean? It gives me a chance to deep, deep, uh, dig deeper into the issue. And what I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be, uh, I'm going to show you the problem and we're going to look at a solution for this problem. So, like I said already, the problem goes back to 5.4 uh, engine. So, why is it still on 5.0 engines? Well, it's bad engineering. I'm going to let you decide. You know what I mean? It's easy to blame engineers. Uh, easy to blame engineering. But at the end of the day, engineers are the ones that... They're not the ones who want to design a bad product or bad engine or create problems. It's the upper management that tells them, this is the budget, make it happen. And you know what I mean? If you ever work with engineer, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you're an engineer yourself. So let's look at this. Uh, what this is. This is a lash adjuster. This is what keeps that either makes it noise if it's not working properly or eliminates the noise one is from 5.4 and one is from 5.0 which one you, have you guessed it which one from 5.4 well the bigger one is 5.4 smaller one 5.0 let's take a look let's open up and let's take a look let me give you a quick rundown i have another sample so this is how it works you know what i mean this is what actually uh this right here it moves. This part extracts under pressure. This cold, these are lash adjuster. These are hydraulic. How it works? There's a tiny hole. See the tiny hole? Well, oil enters and pushes out. And this is the problem. The problem is when the engine is cold, when the engine is cold, this part here, it actually it pull comes out under high pressure and it pushes on it and it prevents that noise when everything is rotating you know what i mean and uh and if the oil is too thick or if there is a restrictions or something you don't hit don't get enough pressure or you don't get fast enough pressure high pressure oil and the engine is running and you have this rattling noise and because this thing is hasn't been able to push out Oil comes out, oil enters through this hole. Let me show you how big this hole. For the reference, I'll use the uh, tip of the pen. It's about the same size as the tip of the pen, you know what I mean? It's it's right there, you know what I mean? It's very tiny. Oil comes here and then comes out from, from the hole. So that's how it works. That's how it, it pushes on this top part from the inside out, so you don't have this noise anymore it, it adjusts high pressure adjusts lifts this up and eliminates uh any extra movement any extra space this is a 5.4 came from the bag lash adjuster you know what i mean very massive very massive and uh wasn't big an issue on five fours haven't had many people complaining at least researching uh it was a quick fix just based on a based on a using the just a uh, synthetic oil and the issue was resolved this one here is from 5.0 agent look how tiny comparing to the five to f comparing to the 5.4 this thing is very small very small you know what i mean it's 
it's almost like a half the size in diameter well not half the size but significantly as you can see there's a significant difference in diameter and the size of the size of the hole uh they're about the same size of the holes but the output definitely makes it there's a big difference so Ford definitely dropped the ball on 5.0 they definitely made an error when they designed it definitely you know what i mean they should have kept it those bigger ones because more oil comes in more oil comes out you know what i mean uh faster will push on a will disc to come out to eliminate uh, extra space between between the ruler between this uh, rocker arm and uh will eliminate that extra space and prevents uh, rattling noise for as you can see they did definitely made a mistake going to the smaller size created more problems how do we fix that? that's one problem on 5.4 aftermarket world jumped in and i'm not sure how many companies out there they realized that the issue was there was it common to some extent there you know what i mean and they created a high pressure high volume uh oil pump replacement to the factory people who replaced it i never heard anyone complaining about having that rattling noise or so on you know what i mean so it seems like that was the fix on 5.0 or 3.5 EcoBoost, I haven't seen, maybe there is, I haven't looked looked into it, if there is an issue with, uh, not an issue, if aftermarket already developed a, a, a fix, maybe increasing the pressure with the oil pump, or um, the volume, you know what I mean, so, so the problem is size, whole size different, this plunger, if you want, this hydraulic live uh, lash adjuster is different sizes, different holes, and it makes it actually um, a problem. Not much you can do because this is 5.0, this is 5.4, you know what I mean? Should, four should have kept it or make it bigger on the inside, you know what I mean? So that's one problem. The other problem, uh, oil pump. If the oil pump cannot supply, provide enough pressure to the top portion of the engine where all of this is, you're gonna have a problem. Maybe the ports that oil flows is not big enough. That could be another problem. And um, to fix this issue, try different oils. That's your first thing. Because you're not gonna force Ford to replace this, to re-engineer this, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, Unless the, the issue is across the board. Otherwise, Ford will not do anything about it. It will take time. But keep, keep in mind, like I already uh, explained to you, Try different oils. Because you're using mobile, try something else. Try Emsol, try Pennzoil. You know, try more expensive oil and see if you notice any difference. This one person said he noticed the difference right away. You know what I mean? And it's good that he commented because I'm like, try it. You know what I mean? It was my recommendation. I only can recommend, but at the end of the day, it's your truck or your car. You can say, no, I will stick. I've been using it for 30 years, never had issue with this oil. Well, here's the thing. You never had a car for 30 years, you know what I mean? Cars back then were simpler. They never had hydraulic uh, lash adjusters. They were simple. So this part was not there. Engines were simpler, less horsepower, less stress on the engine. So, and I want to mention something else. Very important to have clean oil because look at the holes. Look how tiny they are. We're talking about... 116th or so and if the holes are plugged up with a carbon build up not change the oil enough or maybe oil has impurities or whatever the reason is you know what i mean it's very important to use high quality oil high detergent oil to keep those ports clean you know what i mean you gotta use oil with the high detergents change oil more often you know if there is cheap oils have less detergent more expensive oils have more detergent it's just a matter of fact and something else i want to mention to show you guys this is actually not for that i showed you earlier the input hole is it's about the same you know what i mean i, I can't tell the difference maybe a little bit bigger maybe not i don't know i'll i'll let you guys be the judges and decide on your own but the output it's this is smaller you see this is actually not ford part this is from ford's competitor uh this is 5.4 
and the output is the same thing. This engine, the Ford Comparator, just doesn't have this rattle on those, doesn't have this issue. No one ever complained because you know why? It's properly engineered. Properly engineered and this brand does not use 5W20 like Ford uses 5W20. It uh, uses 0W20. And you're going to ask me, can I switch to 0W20 in my Ford? I don't know. You know, my Ford does not recommend. You would have to try, you know, if it's your engine. I, it's, you can try it if you want to. If not, you know what I mean? I wouldn't try going different viscosity, especially thicker. Thicker viscosity is definitely no, no. It's, it's a, it's a worst thing you can do in a modern engine. Uh, if it's your daily driver, unless you're racing, that's a different story. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about daily drivers that people have, as you can see, you know what I mean? Competitor versus uh, Ford. They're very close. Actually, this is 2.5 engine. This is uh, 5.0 or 3.5. I think EcoBoost has the same thing. And this is 5.4. I definitely like this 5.4 engine, not engine, but uh, this uh, lash adjuster. Bigger, more wo wo more oil can come in and more oil can come out faster than I mean. You create this big push to push it out to eliminate any rattling, to eliminate any gap. Thank you and have an awesome day.